Ice Locked here with Nocturne Gaming, back with more Legends of Eidolon, and we're taking a look at the World 4 skill Breeding. Breeding is a pet collection system that provides bonuses throughout the game. Currently, no classes can specialize in breeding. However, the breeding level is shared between all of your classes as well as the XP. So there's not really any stats to focus on for this, but we're going to go over all the different things we can for this now. So breeding is separated into four sections, and that is the breeding section, the teams section, the upgrade, and then the database. So starting with the breeding tab, initially you'll only have the green spore available. And when you click on the spore, you'll see quite a bit of information. So on the top, you see the name of the pet that you're looking at, its trait that it will always have, with the exception of if it gets the breedability trait, from here you see the breeding chance on this and the breeding chance is what chance you have to unlock the next pet and so you have a base chance here and then you have your multipliers below that for example the genetic multiplier which we'll go over in just a minute and then the breedable multiplier which is from tab three the upgrades tab and then you have your total chance that's calculated for you on the right hand side, you do have the genetic multiplier tab, and this is increased by spending DNA splices, which we'll get to soon. And then it shows you your total level of this. And then you click the upgrade button here, it spends your splices, and it'll level you up and give you a little bit higher of a multiplier. And then lastly, you have the breeding button here. This spins one of your eggs each time you click it. And the eggs are seen here in the egg incubator at the top. And you gain one egg every two hours. When you click the breed button, it'll pop up here on the far right hand side. And this shows you the pet that you're going to get from this. And it shows you either a combat power or a foraging power here. The combat monsters or pets are have a red background the foraging pets have a green background here and then the last option is a breedable pet which will have a pink background again more on that later so from here you have to decide if you want to keep this pet or trash it if you want to keep it this pet does go into your storage and there are a limited amount of storage slots so be careful on choosing which pets you want to keep you can get rid of them later, but it's kind of annoying to do that every time. So you can keep your pet or you can trash it. When you trash it, you gain gray DNA splices that are also used in your upgrades tab. So for now, we'll keep this just to hold on to it. And then, so your goal in the breeding tab is to simply unlock more of your pets. And each of these pets will have a new trait and this is a green background pet so you can see what the foraging looks like here and there's your gray dna splices you gain and as you unlock more pets you'll eventually unlock the red mushroom initially this will have a little gold key icon looks similar to this blue icon and when you unlock that gold key it will unlock all of the world two pets starting with the sandy pot and then you follow the same path down you need to unlock more and more of these pets to eventually unlock world three and so on and so forth so now let's talk about how to get dna splices and first you need a splice gun and splice guns the world one splice gun is bought from the world four shop at the top of this map and it enables splicing when in world one only Eventually, you can unlock the World 2 Splice Gun, and it is crafted in the Anvil Tab 4. All the way at the bottom here, this is the World 2 Gun. However, you do need to get a recipe that drops from the Pincerman. And the World 2 enables splicing up to World 2 mobs. And then the World 3 one is a recipe that is dropped from Thermeisters in World 3, and it enables splicing up to World 3. So we're going to go ahead and equip our splice gun now, and we're going to head to World 1 for spores. And when you're choosing a map that you want to gain DNA splices on, it needs to be in the world of the pets that you're wanting to get. So World 1 pets need splices from World 1. Uh, world 2 needs splices from World 2. And then make sure you're choosing 
a map that has your highest AFK gains here. So on this map, I have 56,000 kills an hour, and this will allow me to get quite a bit of splices. So the only way to get DNA splices is to first have your splice gun equipped and then AFK in this map. So we're gonna use a time candy here to simulate that really quick. And when your AFK gains menu pops up, if you have a splicer equipped, then you will get this button here that says splice. And when you click on this, it will re-roll all of your drops into gene splices with the exception of your EXP per hour and your coins. So once you claim this, your splices will drop and you'll be able to pick them up and then. And now we're back, so we're gonna look at our Glublin here and we'll spend some of our splices to get a good breeding chance. And as you're upgrading this, it is going to cost more and more splices. So you're wanting to find a good balance on how much you're wanting to spend. I just went ahead and spent everything. Maybe we'll get a new pet here. So it increased my multiplier up to nine, which made this down from a one in 200 chance to a one in 47. And as we spend our eggs here, we do gain EXP and we're just looking for some good pets here. So not too lucky today, but that's okay. We can get more splices and come back to it a little later. And we can also hope to get those pink pets, which we're gonna look at now. So on to the teams tab. First, we're gonna start with the fenced yard at the top. And initially this can really only be used for extra storage slots for your pets. Uh, but its primary function is to level up the breedability multiplier that you'll eventually unlock. And breedable pets will have this pink background here and they add their power to a calculation that gives you more breedable multiplier for that pet. This is only added to you at reset each day, so you won't get any instant gains, but each day you will gain a little bit more and it'll make getting new pets just that much easier. So next we're gonna talk about the foraging area and initially this will require a pet battle, but we're gonna go over that in just a minute. So just wanna talk about this first. So in the first area, you'll be able to just add green pets here or your foraging pets and this will add to your total foraging speed based on the power of these pets. So if we add a higher power pet, we'll gain more total foraging speed. And the foraging speed is based off of this green bar at top, up top. It tells you how much foraging you need to gain one spice. So it takes your total foraging speed divided by what this green bar means and gives you a total resource fund per hour. And each new foraging area will give you the next level of spices. Once you have any resources in your resource fund, you can claim it and this will add those spices to your cooking area. And it does not require any inventory slots, but you do need quite a bit of them to upgrade your cooking. So you want to be unlocking foraging areas and getting pets foraging as soon as possible for your cooking. So next you can see in the jungle tab, I actually have a combat pet here. And this is because if we take this off, it says your pets need fight power to forage. So it needs five fighting power before it can gain anything. So as long as you select a pet that has more than five fighting power, you'll be able to start foraging. As you go down, you will need more and more fighting power, such as down here, I need at least 100. So you do need a good combination of foraging pets and fighting pets. This can change later on in breeding as there is an upgrade in upgrades tabs that allow some of your foraging to be included in your fighting power, but that's for much later in the game. So on to the battles next, and this is what the battles look like. It tells you how much HP the mob actually has, and we're gonna select fight here. And in the fight, you start this fight by first selecting which pets you wanna use, and you just simply drag and drop them at the bottom and each pet that you select will auto attack every round on its own, but it also has an ability and this ability slowly fills up and then you activate them by simply clicking on them. Uh, so this is a defensive ability, the foraging guy heals, so make sure you're using them appropriately and you hopefully can clear the next fight. If you do happen to lose this, there's no penalty, but 
you can try different combinations of different pets and hopefully clear and start gaining the next spice a little quicker. So we'll begin the fight just to see what it looks like and these abilities start filling up a little bit at a time and every monster attacks and we want that heal as soon as possible. And then using these abilities as often as you can really. So the monsters start fighting your first pet first, your second pet next. So you really want a good beefy pet up front. And then this will hopefully allow you to clear just a little bit sooner. So unfortunately we were defeated there, so we won't be able to unlock the next area quite yet. But next on to the pet arena. And the pet arena is an area that can only be fought in once per day. So make sure that you have done everything else before you start the arena for the day. So we'll go ahead and go in and here is a bunch of bonuses from breeding that applies to pretty much everything in the game. This is very similar to the foraging fights and you simply select the pets you want to use here and I'm just throwing my highest three combat powers on here for now. Um, but the main purpose is to gain the bonuses and you can see those bonuses by clicking the giant C bonuses box and at the top it shows you your best round defeated and then below that it shows you the different bonuses. The ones that are currently active are a little bit more highlighted, a little brighter and so I have up to round 12 beat so I gain these different bonuses. Once you've beaten round 12, it'll actually show you the next four bonuses and so on and so forth. So as you beat 35, it'll show you round 50 through 100 and then eventually round 125 through 200. But these bonuses affect a lot of different things in the game from more damage to new post office boxes to kitchen upgrades or even more money. But let's go ahead and see what a uh, arena looks like. And this is a continuous battle. And as we're fighting... When we clear round one, it'll just go to round two until all of your pets are knocked out. And so we just want to keep using our abilities and I'll speed up a little bit just to get through this. All right, so unfortunately I wasn't able to finish that up uh, past what I've already gotten to, but we're gonna move on to upgrades next. And in the upgrades tab, this is where we start gaining bonuses to help our breeding and level up a little bit faster, a little bit easier. And first, when you initially start your upgrades, you'll only have access to genetic splicing. And genetic splicing allows you to start using your genetic multiplier and it costs these gray DNA splices to upgrade and plus it will cost some recipe in the kitchen to upgrade. So for this one it requires turkey which is the basic cooking requirement and as you level this up it's going to decrease the cost of your DNA splices to increase your gene boosting. So at level five, you'll unlock the egg capacity, and this just increases the maximum number of eggs you have in your egg incubator. And But it does cost quite a bit of these pies, so it will take a little bit of time. Next at level 10 is when you unlock your breedability pulse, and this increases your breed, breeding ability speed by unlocking that multiplier. So you won't actually gain any of the pets with a pink background until you actually unlock this talent and leveled it up to level one. It does require corn from the kitchen to upgrade. However, it really just adds a small percentage. So you just wanna unlock this as soon as possible. When you do upgrade this, your breeding will add a little bit more of a multiplier each day from those breedable pets. At level 15, you'll unlock the fence extension, which just simply adds more slots to your fence yard. Past this, all of these new upgrades only really give benefits to breeding and just make things a little bit faster. Uh, so there's quite a bit of bonuses that can be unlocked and new multipliers as well. So lastly, we wanna take a look at the database tab. And there are three more tabs in here that are fairly simple. Uh, first is your storage. This just shows you all of the pets that you currently have that are not actively foraging or in the fence yard. Next is the 
genetics tab and this shows you the fighting genes you've currently discovered so as you unlock more pets you'll unlock new genetics sometimes they'll have the same genetics but the further you get the more that you'll have and if you click on each of these each genetic has a combat ability and a bonus and the combat ability is usually something that helps with doing more damage or defense while fighting the bonus can be anything from helping with combat to the forager genetics which have more bonuses towards foraging but everybody will have a combat ability and a bonus so keep an eye on those and this will help you build better teams in your your pet arenas so last thing is your specials tab and this is where you see any of the pets that you have gained a shiny pet from uh, which is a rare chance until you get to higher levels and then you can increase your odds of getting a shiny pet. Uh, each shiny pet that you unlock will have a new bonus to add and makes your foraging or your combat just a little bit easier. But that's pretty much it for breeding. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you're enjoying this type of content. And a huge shout out to our Patreon members that support the work we do. Thank you from all of us here at Nocturne Gaming. If you would like to become a patron and get some added benefits, check out the link in the description. If you have any thoughts, comments, or questions, please leave them down below for me, and we'll see you next time.